Hey everyone, welcome back to GraveyardDance.com. We hope our younger viewers have been enjoying our first two installments of Terrifying Tales for Kids. Since summer break is almost upon us, I decided to do a part three installment to this series. If you like what we do, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button and become a loyal watcher of our channel. We'd love to have you in the Graveyard Dance family. We try to bring new content out about once a week, but in case you've missed any of it, it's all right there on our website, GraveyardDance.com. There you can find all our work as well as so many other cool things like our merchandise shop where you can be the cool kid in school wearing an awesome Graveyard Dance shirt or hoodie. So head over there and get yours today. Know what else you should consider getting. A new dog or cat. Tell your mom and dad that they need to head over to eyesofadog.com and find their nearest rescue. There are literally hundreds of thousands of pets that are needing a family to love and a soft bed to lay their heads. You can find them at eyesofadog.com. With all that out of the way, enjoy the video. Grab a snack and don't forget, subscribe and like. Well, guess we'll watch our first video now. The Enchanted Board Game. In the dusty confines of an attic tucked away in an old Victorian mansion, three curious kids named Keaton, Sawyer, and Maddox stumbled upon a forgotten relic, a mysterious board game covered in cobwebs and shadows. Its ornate design spoke of ancient origins, and as they brushed off the dust, they uncovered the faded inscription, The Game of Shadows. Intrigued by the game's aura, the trio decided to give it a try. As they rolled the dice and moved their pieces across the board, an eerie glow enveloped the room, and a gust of wind swept through, extinguishing the candles. Suddenly, they found themselves transported into a realm unlike any they had ever seen. Before them stretched a landscape of twisted trees, glowing mushrooms, and peculiar creatures lurking in the shadows. The air crackled with magic, and the sky shimmered with an otherworldly light. They realized with a start that they were now players in the very game they had found. Keaton, Sawyer, and Maddox exchanged nervous glances but pressed forward, determined to uncover the secrets of this strange new world. They encountered talking animals, mischievous fairies, and towering giants as they journeyed through the fantastical realm. But with each turn of the game, the challenges grew more perilous. They faced riddles from wise old owls, dodged traps set by cunning goblins, and outwitted the schemes of a wicked sorcerer who sought to keep them trapped forever. Yet, despite the dangers, they also discovered allies along the way. A gentle unicorn guided them through the enchanted forest, a friendly dragon lent them its fiery breath to fend off attackers, and a kindly which bestowed upon them enchanted artifacts to aid in their quest. As they ventured deeper into the heart of the realm, they uncovered the truth behind the game's creation. It was crafted centuries ago by a benevolent wizard to protect the realm from dark forces. But over time, its magic had weakened, allowing malevolent entities to seep through the cracks. Realizing their role in restoring balance to the realm, Keaton, Sawyer, and Maddox banded together, using their wits and courage to overcome each challenge. With every triumph, the game regained its strength, and the realm began to flourish once more. But their greatest test lay ahead, a final showdown with the sorcerer who sought to plunge the realm into eternal darkness. With their newfound friends by their side, they confronted the sorcerer in a climactic battle that shook the very foundations of the realm. In the end, it was not brute strength or magic that prevailed, but the power of friendship and hope. With a brilliant flash of light, the sorcerer was vanquished, and the realm was bathed in a renewed sense of peace and harmony. As the glow of victory faded, Keaton, Sawyer, and Maddox found themselves back in the attic, the board game lying before them, now devoid of its mystical aura. They exchanged knowing smiles, forever bound by the extraordinary adventure they had shared. And though the game of shadows had come to an end, the memories of their journey would live on in their hearts, reminding them that sometimes, the greatest adventures await those brave enough to roll the dice and step into the unknown. Eliza and the E.T. Once upon a time, in the serene outskirts of a small town, there resided a bright-eyed girl named Eliza. Her days were filled with wonder and her backyard served as the canvas for her imaginative adventures. One sunny afternoon, as Eliza frolicked in her backyard, she encountered a peculiar sight. 
At the edge of the woods stood a shimmering figure, unlike anything she had ever seen before, with large, almond-shaped eyes and skin aglow with an otherworldly luminescence. It was an extraterrestrial being. Hello! Eliza called out, her voice filled with curiosity. The being turned towards her, its eyes widening in surprise. Greetings, little one. It chimed in a melodious voice. I am lost. I am searching for my mother. Determined to help, Eliza eagerly offered her assistance. Together, they ventured into the woods, following the faint trail left by the visitor's mother. Along the way, they encountered sparkling streams teeming with iridescent fish, mysterious flora that glowed in the dark, and creatures that seemed to dance on air. After what felt like an eternity of exploration, they stumbled upon a clearing where the extraterrestrial's mother awaited anxiously. With joyous cries, mother and child were reunited, their bond unbreakable. Grateful for Eliza's help, the extraterrestrial and its mother extended an invitation beyond her wildest dreams. They offered to take Eliza and her mother on a journey through the galaxies, promising to show them sights that no human eyes had ever seen. Eliza's heart raced with excitement as they boarded the alien spacecraft, leaving Earth far behind. Through the vast expanse of space, they traveled, visiting worlds that defied imagination. Their first stop was Lumina, a planet bathed in the soft glow of bioluminescent flora. They floated among the treetops, their laughter mingling with the gentle hum of nocturnal creatures. Next, they journeyed to Aquatica, a world of endless oceans teeming with vibrant marine life. They swam alongside iridescent schools of fish and marveled at towering coral reefs. Their adventure continued as they explored the crystalline caves of Crystallos, where shimmering stalactites and stalagmites cast prismatic rainbows across the walls. Their final destination was Nova Prime, a celestial paradise where stars danced in a kaleidoscope of colors and ethereal music filled the air. As they bid farewell to their newfound friends and returned home, Eliza's heart overflowed with gratitude. Though their adventure had come to an end, the memories they had shared would stay with her forever, a testament to the boundless wonders of the universe. The Grumpy Ghosts in the Attic Once upon a time, in a quaint little town with winding streets and cozy cottages, there lived a couple named Bob and Bev. They had spent most of their lives together in their beloved home, raising their children and creating countless memories. But when they passed away, they found themselves lingering on as ghosts, unable to move on to the afterlife. And so, they took up residence in the attic of their former home, much to the dismay of their grown children, who had inherited the house. Bob and Bev, being the stubborn and opinionated couple they were in life, wasted no time in driving each other crazy in the afterlife. From bickering over who got to haunt which room to arguing about the proper way to scare the neighbors, there was never a dull moment in the attic. Bev, why do you always have to rearrange the furniture? We're ghosts, for crying out loud. Bob grumbled as he floated through the walls. Well, someone has to keep this place looking presentable, Bob. We can't let it turn into a haunted house cliché, Bev retorted, floating over to straighten a crooked picture frame. Their bickering echoed through the halls of the old house, much to the chagrin of their children, who could hear them arguing from downstairs. Mom and Dad are at it again, their daughter sighed, rolling her eyes as she stirred a pot of soup on the stove. Downstairs, Bob and Bev's son shook his head in exasperation. They never change, even in the afterlife, he muttered to himself. But despite their constant squabbling, Bob and Bev still had moments of tenderness and affection. They would often reminisce about their life together, sharing stories and laughter late into the night. And though their children found their ghostly presence a bit unsettling at times, they couldn't deny that having their parents around brought a certain warmth and familiarity to the old house. One day, as Bob and Bev were arguing over who got to haunt the attic on Tuesdays, they heard a faint voice calling out to them from downstairs. Bob, Bev, can you hear us? Their daughter called, her voice tinged with worry. Rushing downstairs, Bob and Bev found their children gathered around a Ouija board, their faces pale with fear. We thought we heard you arguing, but we weren't sure if it was really you, their son explained, his voice trembling slightly. Bob and Bev looked at each other, 
their eyes filled with surprise and realization. Despite their constant bickering, they had never stopped loving each other or their children. And so, with tears in their eyes, Bob and Bev made a pact to put aside their differences and focus on the things that truly mattered. Family, love, and the precious moments they shared together, both in life and in the afterlife. From that day forward, the attic of their old home was filled with laughter and joy, as Bob and Bev embraced their role as guardian angels to their children, watching over them with pride and affection. And though they still drove each other crazy from time to time, Bob and Bev wouldn't have it any other way. For in the end, they knew that love was the greatest gift of all, even in the afterlife. The Evil Doll Once upon a time, in a small town nestled between misty mountains and whispering forests, there lived three sisters named Emily, Lizzie, and Katie. The sisters were known for their adventurous spirits and love for exploring hidden treasures. One rainy afternoon, they stumbled upon an old antique store at the edge of town. As they entered the dimly lit shop, their eyes fell upon a peculiar doll displayed on a dusty shelf. The doll had cracked porcelain skin, scary black eyes that seemed to follow them, and a twisted smile that sent shivers down their spines. Despite its eerie appearance, Katie was drawn to the doll and convinced her sisters to purchase it. That night, as the clock struck midnight, the sisters were awoken by faint whispers echoing through the house. To their horror, they saw the antique doll standing at the foot of their bed, its lifeless eyes now filled with malice. Frozen in fear, the girls watched as the doll began to move on its own, its porcelain limbs creaking with each step. Terrified, Emily, Lizzie, and Katie ran through the dark corridors of their home, trying to evade the haunting doll that relentlessly pursued them. The sound of porcelain tapping against wooden floors echoed through the house as the sisters hid in closets and under beds, praying for dawn to break. Each night became a harrowing ordeal as the antique doll came to life with a thirst for their fear. Its presence cast a shadow of dread over their once peaceful home. The girls knew they had to find a way to stop the malevolent spirit trapped within the doll before it consumed them entirely. Desperate for help, the girls sought out an old wise woman rumored to possess knowledge of ancient charms and spells. With trembling hands, she explained their plight and begged for a solution to banish the haunted doll from their lives. Armed with enchanted talismans and incantations whispered under moonlit skies, the girls banded together and confronted the doll in a final showdown. As the first rays of sunlight pierced through the darkness, a brilliant light engulfed the room as ancient magic clashed with dark forces. In a blinding flash, silence descended upon the house as the antique doll crumbled into dust before their eyes. The curse that bound it was finally broken, releasing its hold on their home and restoring peace once more. From that day on, Emily, Lizzie, and Katie vowed never to underestimate the power of ancient relics and to always heed warnings from things that go bump in the night. The Boy Next Door Once upon a time, in a small, foggy town nestled between misty mountains and whispering forests, there lived a little vampire boy named Vlad. Despite being a member of the spooky vampire clan, Vlad was unlike any other vampire you might have heard of. Instead of craving blood like his family, Vlad had a peculiar taste for cherry popsicles and red Kool-Aid. In the attic of an old, cobweb-laden mansion, Vlad sat cross-legged on a creaky floorboards, slurping on his favorite cherry popsicle. His crimson eyes sparkled with delight as he savored the icy sweetness, completely unaware of the moonlit night outside. He sighed contentedly, wishing he could enjoy his treat without hiding from the disapproving glares of his vampire relatives. Meanwhile, just next door, another unusual resident resided, a young zombie boy named Zack. With patches of greenish skin and arms outstretched, Zack shuffled along the overgrown path leading to Vlad's mansion. His hollow eyes scanned the surroundings, searching for something to satisfy his undead hunger. As Zack approached the mansion, a sudden chill ran down his decomposing spine. The air seemed to thicken with an eerie presence, and Zack's heart, or what remained of it, began to race. With a hesitant groan, he stumbled closer, unaware that he was about to encounter someone who would change his afterlife forever. Inside the mansion, Vlad sensed an intruder, 
His keen vampire senses tingled with excitement as he abandoned his popsicle and floated down the stairs, his cape billowing behind him. With a theatrical flourish, he swung open the door to find Zack standing on the doorstep, his undead gaze fixed on Vlad. For a moment, silence hung heavy in the air, broken only by the soft drip of melting popsicle. Then Vlad's lips curved into a mischievous grin. Boo! he exclaimed, spreading his bat-like wings in a dramatic display. Zack let out a startled moan and stumbled backward, nearly tripping over his own feet. Gee, ghost! he stuttered, his limbs trembling with fear. Vlad chuckled, his laughter echoing through the dimly lit foyer. Not quite, my friend. I'm Vlad, a vampire, he declared proudly, twirling his cape for added effect. Zack blinked in confusion, his fear momentarily forgotten. The vampire? He repeated, his undead brain struggling to process this new information. Yes, indeed, Vlad replied, floating closer to Zack with a playful gleam in his eyes. But don't worry, I'm not like the others. I don't drink blood. I prefer cherry popsicles and red Kool-Aid. Zack's expression shifted from fear to curiosity as he processed Vlad's words. Really? I, I like cherry popsicles too, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. Vlad's eyes widened with delight. No way, we're like popsicle pals, he exclaimed, extending a hand, or rather a clawed finger in friendship. Tentatively, Zack reached out and shook Vlad's hand, a tentative smile forming on his decaying lips. Despite their differences, he realized that Vlad wasn't so scary after all. He was just a vampire with a sweet tooth. From that day on, Vlad and Zack became inseparable friends. They spent their nights exploring the eerie town, sharing cherry popsicles and swapping stories of their unusual lives. And as they wandered through the misty streets, they discovered that they had more in common than they ever imagined. Together, they faced the challenges of being different in a world that often feared the unknown. But with each other by their side, they found the courage to embrace their quirks and celebrate their unique friendship. And so, in the small, foggy town nestled between misty mountains and whispering forests, a vampire and a zombie proved that even the spookiest of creatures could find friendship in the most unexpected places. And as they laughed and danced beneath the moonlit sky, they knew that their bond would last for eternity, fueled by cherry popsicles and red Kool-Aid. The Phantom Ice Cream Truck In the quiet suburb of Richardson, there lived a timid little girl named Shannon. Every night, as she lay in bed, she would hear the faint jingle of an ice cream truck drifting through her window, its melody haunting her dreams. At first, Shannon thought nothing of it, chalking it up to her imagination running wild. But as the nights passed, the sound grew louder and more persistent, echoing through the corridors of her mind like a ghostly whisper. One fateful night, Shannon found herself trapped in a nightmare. She was standing alone on a deserted street, surrounded by towering shadows that seemed to stretch endlessly into the darkness. Suddenly, the sound of the ice cream truck filled the air, its familiar tune sending shivers down her spine. Shannon tried to run, but her legs felt like lead, rooted to the ground by an unseen force. As the ice cream truck drew closer, Shannon could see its flickering headlights cutting through the night like two fiery eyes. The air grew colder, thick with an unnatural chill that made her teeth chatter. And then, emerging from the mist, she saw it the ice cream truck, its paint peeling and rusted, like a relic from another time. Terrified, Shannon tried to scream, but no sound escaped her lips. The ice cream truck came to a stop in front of her, its engine growling like a hungry beast. Slowly, the driver's window rolled down, revealing a shadowy figure cloaked in darkness. With a gnarled hand, it beckoned Shannon forward, its voice a hollow whisper in the night. Heart pounding, Shannon stepped closer, her mind consumed by fear. But just as she was about to reach out, everything dissolved into darkness, and she woke with a start, drenched in cold sweat. Relief flooded through her as she realized it was all just a dream, a figment of her imagination. In the light of early morning as the sun was coming up, Shannon tried to calm her racing heart. She heard it, the unmistakable jingle of an ice cream truck, 
echoing through the stillness of the day. Dread washed over her as she peered out the window, her eyes widening in horror as she saw the ice cream truck approaching her house. Nope, not today, Satan, not today. I need to go on a diet anyway. You can keep your frozen push pops and with that, she lowered her curtains and decided to go back to sleep for another hour. Shannon knew that if she ever wanted ice cream, she'd buy it at Dairy Queen like everyone else. Well, that's all we have today, folks. I hope you enjoyed watching the videos as much as I did making them. Tell all your friends to head to the graveyard. Graveyarddance.com, that is. We'll be waiting there for you.